Hello, welcome to United Charismatic Healing Ministry, and this is your regular host, Pastor Eddie Cochran. Um, I'm continuing with this series I've been talking about, Working the Works of God, and today I've subtitled it, How to Have an Effective Prayer Life, because it's very, very important for us as Christians to have a prayer life. Other religions, like the Muslim religion, have a prayer life. They pray five times a day. And whatever they're doing, when it's the call of prayer comes on the ears, they will leave everything they're doing and go seek God's face. The Jews pray three times a day. And whatever they're doing, they will stop. We are the only sect, the Christians are the only people who doesn't have a prayer life. If it's prayer time and somebody is coming to our shop to buy something, we will sell to the person and later on maybe find time to. And sometimes we don't even find the time to pray. We take our prayer time, no, we don't take it serious at all. And that's what I want to talk about today. <clears throat> that we'll be more serious in our prayer time. That we'll be committed to our prayer time. That we should have a prayer life. Set the time, set a date. I mean, not date, set times every day. That this is the time I'm going to see God's face. And spend that time with God. Maybe once a day, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, whatever you, you can do, whatever you want to do, just set the days and keep the time. Because anytime we tell God, I want to meet with you at such, such time, God shows up. Even though we don't see with our naked eyes, He shows up. Because He loves that union. He loves the fellowship. So please, let's make a mandate of our time. The Lord says that my house shall be called the house of prayer. This I'm talking about this physical walls. That any time we gather together, we need to pray. And he says, that is what I call my house. My house shall be called the house. But we go beyond that, not, the, just, not just the physical building. But also we, spiritual beings, who is the house of God. Because the Spirit of God lives in us. So this house should also be called a house of prayer. So as children of God, as Christians, we need to have a prayer life. We need to spend time praying to God every day. Praise the Lord. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't be careful about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't fret about anything. Don't worry about anything. But everything through prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. For he that answers prayer will answer you and bring it to pass in your life in Jesus' name. And as you pray, the peace of God will rule in your hearts and in your minds in the name of Jesus. It is only prayer that changes the heart of people. It's only prayer that positions us to be able to receive that which God has for us. Prayer does not change God. Prayer changes us, changes our heart, conditions our heart, positions us so that we can receive what God has promised us. So we cannot afford not to pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint, according to Luke chapter 18, verse 1, coming down. It says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men should be persistent in prayer. Pray in the morning, pray in the noontime, pray in the evening, for you don't know which prayer will bring your breakthrough or will bring your harvest. The morning could bring the harvest, the evening could bring the harvest. Maybe both of them could bring a harvest. As children of God, I want to empower all of us. I want to motivate all of us that let us spend time in, with God in the place of prayer. I remember when I was in Bible school, we had this man of God from Iowa who came to, to teach us for about two weeks. And he just came to motivate us and encourage us as aspiring ministers. We should spend time with God in prayer. And he says we should make it a mandate that we'll pray two hours every day. And I took that challenge. Decided at least 
every day at least two hours i will go to god in prayer so every morning before i go to school to bible school i will walk the streets and pray for an hour come and take my bath and go to school after school i in the afternoon around 1 32 when school is ended i'll come home eat my lunch and go into this secluded place and an uncompleted school building a very quiet place trees all over the place and i'll go to one of the classrooms and spend time there pray by an hour hour and a half and i spent those months and i started realizing the presence of god because when I, before I even get into the classroom, when I step on the on the steps, going to the uh, the threshold or the veranda, I feel the presence of God approaching me. So I knew that God was enjoying our time of fellowship together in the place of prayer. I nobody told me that. I literally felt God. And I he, he, in that time I, I couldn't I couldn't wait. For that afternoon to go before the Lord, to spend time with Him. It is very necessary as children of God for us to spend time in prayer. That we should be prayerful. Because we are children of God. Jesus Himself, when He was on earth, the Bible says He spent time praying. Sometimes He spent all night praying. And He'll come back in the morning, He'll come back to town in the morning. And God will start working miracles through him. When he, he was baptized in water and the Spirit of God came upon him, the Bible says he was led into the wilderness to be tested. And he spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting and praying. And after he had ended the 40 days, he was tested by the enemy. But he overcame because he was ready. For that test he was sensitive to the spirit of god so when the enemy started talking he knew that wasn't the voice of god he knew that was the voice of the enemy so he did not give in he did not obey the enemy it is it is about time that children of god will rise up in the place of prayer don't fool yourself that you can do without prayer you can live a life of faith but your faith should be quickened by your prayer life you need to have a prayer life. You need to spend time. Once in a while, you can add fast to it. Once in a while, you can, as the Lord leads you into a fast, you can go. To, because Jesus was led into the wilderness to fast and to be tempted of the devil. So we have to have a prayer time and we have to have a prayer life. And, and every now and then, as God leads you into fasting, add fasting to your prayer. Because what that fasting does to prayer is it reinforces your prayer. It's just like building a house. You can build a house with blocks. It will be solid. But when you add uh, rebars and beams in the house, it makes it more and more stronger than just the blocks. So let us be prayerful. Let us find time to pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 and 19, it says, Verily I say unto you, Who... Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if thou, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Whatsoever ye will bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That's the mandate upon us. That is the authority God has given us. That when I bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. When I lose on earth, it is lose in heaven. What I permit on earth is permitted in heaven. What I don't permit on earth is not permitted in heaven. That's the authority God has given us and the power in His name. That when we go to the place of prayer, we can change circumstances and we can change situations and we can change uh, constitutions. We can change lifestyles. We can call the presence of God into an atmosphere in prayer. If we know what we carry, if we know what we have, if we know how God has empowered us, then we can use that prayer time to make a difference in the kingdom of God. We can pray for the lost to be saved. We can pray for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We can pray for them to receive healing and miracles. Because God lives in us to do these things through us. 
but we have to find ourselves in the place of prayer, energizing ourselves, charging ourselves. Because the Bible says, He that prayeth not unto God, prayeth not unto men, for, but unto God. For no man understands him. How bad in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. As we pray in the Spirit, we speak mysteries to God. Jude verse 20 says, Pray in the Holy Ghost, building up our most holy faith. As we pray in the Spirit, we build our faith up to believe God for the impossible. Because He's the God who is able to make the impossible possible. But somebody has to believe Him for it. And it will take faith. Our faith to believe God for the impossible. It is my prayer that you, you, you find yourself in the place of prayer. Spend time in prayer. Set time for prayer. As we set time for anything, lunch time, breakfast time, dinner time, let's spend time, let's set time for prayer too. That this, from this time to this time, I'll be seeking God's face. I'll be reading His word. From this time to this time, I'll be seeking God's face. I'll, uh, God's face and I'll be reading His word. It is my prayer that God will stir you up in the place of prayer. You cannot go wrong with prayer. Prayer is like a walking stick to an old man who can walk properly. The walking stick balances him and gives him support. As we pray, prayer puts us in a balance and supports us. Call on him and he will answer you. And he will show you greater mighty things that you do not know. Call upon the Lord. In the time when he can be reached. Because there's coming a day when you call and you will not reach him. This is the time for us to call. So please put yourself in the place of prayer. Set time for yourself. That you will seek God's face. And when you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. When you knock, it shall be opened. When you seek, you will find. When you ask, you shall receive. That's what the Bible says. So when you ask, believe that you will receive it. And you will have it. Because the Bible tells us so also, that when we pray, we should believe we have received what we desire, and it shall be given to us. It is my prayer that God will motivate you and activate you in the place of prayer. That he will, prayer will bubble out of you. You cannot but pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. We need to pray without season. Prayer is the key. Some people say it like this way, that prayer is the master key. That opens every door. Praise the Lord. So as you go into the place of prayer, may the Lord empower you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord use you, even for the kingdom's sake. May the Lord motivate you and activate you into the place of prayer. May the Lord bless you and reward you, even as you put yourself in the place of prayer. God bless you mightily. And um, I'll, I'll see you next time. But before I see you, it is my prayer that the Lord will meet you at the point of your needs and He will show Himself strong on your behalf and glorify Himself in your lives. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen.